fatal love in the Roaring Twenties, the sensational Albert Snyder murder case. Imagine a love triangle gone fatally wrong, a sultry affair, and a murder plot straight out of a noir novel. This is the story of Albert Snyder's murder, a tale of deceit, seduction, and death in the Roaring Twenties. Welcome to Whispers of Guilt, where we dive deep into history's most intriguing and chilling murder cases. Today we're unraveling the twisted story of Albert Snyder, a successful art editor whose life was cut short in a plot driven by love and greed. But what happened on that fateful night in Queens, New York? Stay with us as we dissect the details of this notorious crime. Our podcasts delve into complex and sometimes deeply unsettling events. We understand the impact these narratives can have. Should you find yourself in need of assistance or support at any point, we strongly encourage you to reach out to your local crisis centers. Your well-being is paramount and help is available. Albert Snyder and his marriage. Let's delve into the life of Albert Snyder, his marriage to Ruth Brown, and the family dynamics that lay beneath the surface. In the bustling borough of Queens, New York, Albert, an art editor for a prominent magazine called Motorboating, lived what seemed to many a typical, prosperous life of the Roaring Twenties. His professional success was notable, but it was within the walls of his home that a more complex and darker story unfolded. Albert's personal life seemed stable. He was married to Ruth Brown, a former telephone operator. Ruth was known for her beauty and vivacious spirit, qualities that no doubt caught Albert's eye. Together, they lived in a modest home in Queens, and to the outside world, their marriage appeared conventional, perhaps even idyllic. They shared common interests and moved in well-to-do social circles. In 1918, Ruth gave birth to their only child, a daughter named Lorraine. The arrival of a child typically brings joy and a sense of continuity. However, for Albert, who harbored a preference for a son, Lorraine's birth was a source of disappointment. This discontentment spilled over into the family dynamics, shaping the household's emotional landscape. Albert's demeanor towards his wife and child was far from the loving, protective role one might expect. Reports and later accounts suggest that he was emotionally and physically abusive. He blamed Ruth for not providing a son, demanded perfection within the home, and resorted to physical violence when his expectations were not met. Both Ruth and young Lorraine bore the brunt of his anger and dissatisfaction. The marriage that to outsiders might have appeared ordinary was marred by fear, control and violence. Ruth, trapped in an unhappy and abusive marriage, was left yearning for an escape, for a semblance of the love and affection she was denied at home. This deep unhappiness and desperation set the stage for her fateful encounter with Judd Gray, and the tragic events that would follow. As we reflect on Albert and Ruth's marriage and the family they built, it's crucial to understand the hidden pains and pressures that simmered beneath the surface. The abuse and domestic turmoil undoubtedly shaped the lives of Ruth and Lorraine, contributing to a cycle of despair and ultimately leading to catastrophic decisions. In our exploration of this case, the story of Lorraine an innocent child caught in the crossfire of her parents' tumultuous relationship reminds us of the often unseen victims of domestic violence. Her life, forever altered by the actions of her parents, is a poignant testament to the lasting impact of familial strife. The Entrance of Judd Gray as we continue our journey into the darkened corners of Snyder's seemingly ordinary life, we introduce a new character to our tale, Judd Gray, a mild-mannered corset salesman from upstate New York. Gray's life was about to intertwine with the Snyders in a way that would shock the nation. Ruth and Judd first crossed paths in the most unassuming of ways. It was 1925, and Ruth was shopping in Manhattan, a city bustling with energy and the promise of new experiences. 
Judd, with his salesman charm, was there, peddling corsets, a fashionable item for women of the era. Their meeting seemed innocent enough, a simple transaction between customer and salesman. But there was an instant spark, a connection that neither could deny. As Ruth returned home that day, she carried with her more than just a new corset. She carried the seeds of an illicit affair that would grow rapidly and consume both her and Judd's lives. The two began meeting secretly, stealing moments together away from the eyes of society and their respective spouses. Their affair was intense and all-consuming. Ruth, who longed for an escape from her unfulfilling marriage, found in Judd a willing partner in her search for excitement and passion. Judd, equally smitten and perhaps overwhelmed by Ruth's allure, was drawn into her world, a far cry from his unremarkable life as a corset salesman. But as with many affairs, the thrill of secrecy was accompanied by a growing desperation. Ruth and Judd's relationship became a tangled web of lies and deceit. As they sought more time together, the risk of discovery grew, and with it, the realization that their clandestine love could not continue indefinitely in the shadows. Driven by a dangerous mix of love, lust, and desperation, Ruth and Judd began to contemplate a dark solution to their predicament, a solution that would allow them to be together without the obstacles of their current lives a fatal solution involving Ruth's unsuspecting husband, Albert. What began as a whispered promise of love and escape was morphing into a sinister plot. The stage was set for a tragic drama that would leave no one unscathed. In our next segment, we'll delve into the fateful decisions and actions that transformed an adulterous affair into a headline-grabbing murder. The plot against Albert Snyder was taking shape, and soon, the world would know the deadly lengths to which Ruth and Judd would go for their forbidden love. The Murder Plot As the affair between Ruth and Judd continued to burn with forbidden intensity, their desperation led them down a treacherous path. No longer content with sneaking around, they began to devise a deadly plan that would rid them of the one obstacle to their happiness, Ruth's husband, Albert Snyder. But as we'll see, their path to freedom was fraught with missteps and botched attempts. The couple's initial attempts at murder were almost comical in their failure, reflecting their inexperience and perhaps subconscious hesitation. On several occasions, they tried to kill Albert by engineering accidents. One scheme involved rigging a shelf to fall on him, another to gas him in his sleep. Each attempt, however, failed, either due to poor execution or sheer luck on Albert's part. But with each failed attempt, Ruth and Judd's resolve only hardened. Their love, now twisted into something dark and obsessive, wouldn't allow them to turn back. It was during this time that they decided to take a more direct, brutal approach. On the night of March 20th, 1927, Ruth and Judd set their final fatal plan into motion. Judd, armed with a heavy window sash weight, entered the Snyder home in Queens, where Albert lay sleeping, unsuspecting of the horror that awaited him. Ruth, playing her part in the gruesome tableau, ensured the way was clear. In the dark of the night, Judd struck Albert multiple times with the weight, but the man wouldn't succumb easily. A struggle ensued, awakening the household. It was chaotic, noisy, and bloody. Finally, to silence Albert's dying groans and ensure he wouldn't rise again, Ruth and Judd strangled him with picture wire, a grim and personal touch given Albert's profession. The deed done, Ruth and Judd attempted to stage the scene as a burglary gone wrong. They ransacked their own home, binding Ruth and locking her in a closet to paint her as another victim of the supposed intruder. It was a hasty and poorly constructed cover-up, one that would quickly unravel under scrutiny. As dawn broke over Queens, the murder of Albert Snyder was discovered, setting off a chain of events that would lead to one of the most sensational trials of the decade. The clumsy attempt to disguise the murder as a robbery, the multiple failed attempts prior, and the passionate and deadly affair between Ruth and Judd would all come to light, shocking the nation 
and sealing the fates of the murderous lovers. In our next segment, we'll explore the aftermath of the murder, the investigation, the trial, and the sensational media frenzy that followed. Stay with us as we continue to unravel the tragic story of Albert Snyder's murder and the fateful decisions that led to a deadly end. Discovery and Investigation As the sun rose on the quiet Queen's neighborhood on that fateful March morning, the brutal murder of Albert Snyder was about to come to light. The stage was set, the players in place, but the curtain was about to be pulled back on the grim scene, revealing the true nature of what had transpired in the Snyder home. It was the housemaid who first discovered the chaos. Upon entering the Snyder home, she found Ruth bound and locked in the closet, portraying herself as a victim of a violent robbery. Ruth's initial account to the authorities painted a picture of unknown intruders who had killed her husband and attacked her. But as detectives surveyed the scene, inconsistencies and suspicions quickly arose. The crime scene itself seemed overly theatrical. Valuables were left untouched, and the way Ruth was tied up didn't quite add up. Her story was fraught with discrepancies and lacked the genuine fear one would expect from a true victim. Detectives noted her calm and composed demeanor, which seemed at odds with the brutal murder of her husband. As the investigation deepened, the focus shifted to Ruth and her behavior leading up to the murder. Neighbors and acquaintances were interviewed, revealing the strains in the Snyder marriage and Ruth's unhappiness. But it was the discovery of love letters between Ruth and Judd Gray that blew the case wide open. The passionate correspondence painted a vivid picture of their affair and their growing desperation. Further investigation uncovered Judd's recent purchase of a heavy window sash weight, the same type used to bludgeon Albert Snyder. The net was closing in on the lovers, their story unraveling with each new piece of evidence. Ruth and Judd were soon brought in for questioning, and under the weight of the evidence, their stories began to crumble. Faced with overwhelming proof and the realization that their plot had been exposed, they turned on each other, each trying to save themselves by shifting the blame. The public and press were captivated by the case, following each twist and turn with bated breath. The media frenzy around the ruthless Ruth and her lover, the corset salesman, turned the investigation into a spectacle, one that highlighted the lurid details of the affair and the botched murder plot. As Ruth and Judd were charged and the case moved towards trial, the sensational story of love, betrayal and murder continued to unfold. The stage was set for a dramatic courtroom battle that would delve deep into the human psyche, examining the lengths to which people will go for love and how far they'll fall when that love turns deadly. In the next segment, we'll take you inside the courtroom for the sensational trial of Ruth Snyder and Judd Gray. Join us as we continue to explore the twists and turns of this infamous murder case. Trial and Media Frenzy As Ruth Snyder and Judd Gray stood trial for the murder of Albert Snyder, the case had already taken on a life of its own. The media, ever hungry for a salacious story, dubbed it the crime of the century. Every detail of the affair, the murder, and the trial was scrutinized, sensationalized, and devoured by an eager public. The trial was held in the spring of 1927, attracting crowds and media from across the nation. The courtroom became a theater, with Ruth and Judd as the unwilling stars of a tragic play. The prosecution presented a damning array of evidence, from the love letters to the botched crime scene, painting a vivid picture of a premeditated murder. Ruth, labeled by the press as the vampire wife, or ruthless Ruth, became the focal point of the trial. Her cold demeanor and apparent lack of remorse only fueled the public's fascination and horror. Judd, the weaker of the two, was portrayed as a hapless victim of Ruth's seduction and manipulation, though his guilt was clear. The defense attempted to paint a different picture, 
one of two people caught in an unhappy marriage and a compulsion they couldn't control. But against the overwhelming evidence and public sentiment, their efforts were in vain. Ruth and Judd's testimonies, rife with contradictions and self-serving lies, did little to garner sympathy. Day by day, the trial unfolded like a soap opera, with new revelations, dramatic testimonies, and relentless media coverage. The public was riveted, following every detail, forming opinions, and waiting eagerly for the verdict. The case not only captivated the nation, but also highlighted the growing influence of the media in shaping public perception. Finally, after a trial that seemed to consume the world's attention, the jury delivered its verdict. Ruth Snyder and Judd Gray were found guilty of first-degree murder. The sentence was death. The outcome was met with a mix of satisfaction, pity, and morbid fascination. The trial may have ended, but the story of Ruth and Judd's ill-fated love and deadly actions would live on, etched into the annals of crime history. In our next segment, we'll reflect on the verdict, the sensational nature of the trial, and the cultural impact of the Snyder murder case. How did this tragic tale of love, betrayal, and murder leave its mark on society? And what does it tell us about the human condition? The Verdict After weeks of dramatic testimonies, sensational headlines, and public speculation, the trial of Ruth Snyder and Judd Gray reached its climax. The jury, tasked with determining the fate of the two lovers turned murderers, deliberated for only 98 minutes. The speed of their decision reflected the strength of the evidence and the public's clamor for justice. The verdict was unequivocal, guilty of first-degree murder. The sentence for both Ruth and Judd was death by electric chair. The decision sent shockwaves through the courtroom and across the nation. For many, it was seen as a just end to a sordid tale of adultery and murder. For others, it evoked a sense of tragedy and a contemplation of the death penalty's moral implications. Ruth Snyder, the first woman to be executed in New York State since 1899, became a particular focus of media attention. The image of a woman facing the electric chair was both horrifying and fascinating to the public. Newspapers and magazines covered every detail of her final days, from her last meal to her final words. The execution of Ruth and Judd was carried out on January 12, 1928, at Sing Sing Prison. The event was marked by a morbid curiosity and a media frenzy. One reporter even managed to sneak in a camera, capturing Ruth's final moments in a chilling photograph that would become iconic. The public reaction to the verdict and execution was mixed. While some saw it as a deterrent to future crimes, Others questioned the sensationalism surrounding the case and the ethics of capital punishment. The Snyder Gray case became a touchstone for debates on crime, punishment, and the role of the media in shaping public opinion. As the story of Ruth and Judd's tragic end circulated, it left an indelible mark on society. The case prompted discussions about the nature of love, the consequences of passion, and the justice system itself. It served as a grim reminder of the darker aspects of the human heart and the ultimate price of forbidden love. In the next segment, we will look at the cultural impact of the Snyder murder case and its enduring legacy. How did this story of passion, betrayal and death influence the arts, legal discussions and societal perceptions of crime and punishment? Cultural Impact the Snyder murder case, with its blend of passion, betrayal and murder, left an indelible mark on American culture. Its impact extended far beyond the trial and executions, influencing arts, literature and the public's perception of crime and justice. Perhaps the most famous artistic rendition inspired by the Snyder case is James M. Cain's novel, Double Indemnity. Published in 1936, this classic of the noir genre tells the story of an insurance salesman who becomes entangled with a seductive woman, leading to murder. Kane admitted 
that the Snyder case, particularly the deceit and the lethal romance, influenced his narrative. The novel was later adapted into a critically acclaimed film, further cementing its place in cultural history. Beyond literature and film, the case also influenced the true crime genre, becoming a staple story for those fascinated by the darker side of human nature. It sparked discussions about the roles of women, the sanctity of marriage, and the motivations behind such heinous acts. The media coverage of the Snyder case set a precedent for how sensational crimes were reported and consumed. It highlighted the growing appetite for lurid details and the dramatic narrative, aspects that continue to characterize true crime reporting to this day. The public's fascination with Ruth Snyder in particular reflected changing attitudes towards female criminals and their portrayal in media. The Snyder case also impacted legal discussions and public awareness of the death penalty. The spectacle of the trial and the executions prompted debates about justice, the penal system, and the morality of capital punishment. These discussions continue in various forms, shaping attitudes and policies regarding crime and punishment. As we reflect on the Snyder murder case and its cultural impact, it's clear that this tragic tale of love and death resonates far beyond the lives of those directly involved. It serves as a cautionary story, a source of artistic inspiration, and a catalyst for societal reflection on the nature of crime, punishment, and the human condition. As we close this chapter, we invite you to consider how the Snyder case reflects broader themes of love, justice, and the role of media in shaping our understanding of crime. Legacy. It's time to reflect on this story's lasting legacy and what it reveals about society both then and now. The echoes of this story continue to resonate, offering insights into human nature, justice and cultural narratives. The Snyder case remains a touchstone in true crime history, a story that people return to for its compelling narrative of forbidden love, betrayal and tragedy. It encapsulates the Roaring Twenties spirit, an era of dramatic social and cultural change where traditional norms were challenged and the quest for personal freedom often led down dark paths. Today, the case is remembered not just for the sensationalism and the tragic fate of its protagonists, but also for its broader implications. It highlighted issues of gender roles, media influence and the criminal justice system issues that remain relevant. Ruth Snyder, in particular, has become an enduring figure, often cited in discussions about female agency, victimhood, and criminality. The Snyder case also serves as a historical lens, offering a glimpse into the societal attitudes and legal practices of the 1920s. It reflects the era's complexities, from the glamour and liberation to the underlying tensions and moral panics. The public's fascination with the case demonstrated a growing appetite for true crime stories, a trend that has only intensified over the years. In many ways, the Snyder case set precedents for how sensational crimes are perceived and portrayed. It was one of the first to be dubbed the crime of the century, a title that has since been bestowed on other notorious cases. Its legacy lives on in the arts, legal discussions and the true crime genre, continually prompting reflection on the nature of love, justice and morality. As we remember the Snyder case, we are reminded of the power of narrative and the enduring fascination with stories that delve into the darker side of the human experience. It invites us to question, to reflect and to understand the complex tapestry of human emotions and societal forces that shape our world. The Life of Lorraine Snyder In the shadow of the sensational Snyder murder case and the ensuing media frenzy, a young girl named Lorraine found her life irrevocably altered. As the only child of Ruth and Albert Snyder, Lorraine's story is one of the most poignant and often overlooked aspects of this tragic tale. Let's delve into her life and the legacy of the events that unfolded around her. 
Following the pronouncement of the death sentence on Ruth Snyder in May 1927, the fate of nine-year-old Lorraine became the center of a heartbreaking legal dispute. On one side was Warren Schneider, Albert's brother, seeking to appoint a legal guardian from outside Ruth's family. On the other side stood Josephine Brown, Ruth's mother, who had been caring for Lorraine since the murder. In these tumultuous times, Lorraine found a semblance of stability with her maternal grandmother, Josephine Brown, who was ultimately awarded guardianship on September 7, 1927. Despite the disputes and the tragic notoriety surrounding her parents, Lorraine was placed in a Catholic institution where she resided during her mother's execution. A decision made to shield her from the final painful moments. The financial aftermath of the murder also impacted Lorraine's life. The insurance policies Ruth had taken out on Albert's life became the subject of legal wrangling. While one policy was paid out to Gray's daughter without contest, two other policies worth a combined total of $45,000 were subject to a lawsuit by the insurance company, claiming they had been issued fraudulently. In the end, the court ruled the policies invalid, leaving the family in financial distress and unable to benefit from the insurance. Amidst the legal and financial battles, a personal story unfolded. While incarcerated, Ruth Snyder wrote a sealed letter, entrusting it to be given to Lorraine when she is old enough to understand. The contents of this letter remain a poignant mystery, a final message from a mother to her daughter, clouded by the tragic circumstances of their lives. As the years passed, Lorraine grew up in the shadow of her parents' infamous legacy. One year after her mother's execution, she was reportedly aware of her parents' deaths, but not the gruesome details surrounding them. The efforts to protect her innocence and provide a semblance of normalcy in a life marked by such public tragedy reflect the enduring love and concern of those who cared for her. Lorraine Snyder's story is a reminder of the often unseen victims in sensational crimes, the children and family members left behind to piece together their lives from the fragments of public scandal and personal loss. Her legacy challenges us to consider the far-reaching consequences of our actions and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable adversity. Podcast Takeaway Reflections on Crime, Love and Betrayal As we close the chapter on the Snyder murder case, we're left with lingering thoughts and emotions. This tale of crime, love and betrayal delves deep into the darker side of human desires and the tragic consequences that can ensue. It's a story that forces us to confront the complexities of the human heart and the thin line between love and obsession. The case highlights how easily love can turn to jealousy, desire to desperation and affection to destruction. It reminds us that beneath the surface of everyday life can lie turbulent emotions and hidden motives. Ruth and Judd's actions serve as a stark reminder of the potential for ordinary people to commit extraordinary and heinous acts. But beyond the individual tragedy and the sensational headlines, the Snyder case invites us to consider broader questions. What drives individuals to cross moral boundaries? How does society react to and portray acts of extreme betrayal? And what can we learn about justice, punishment and rehabilitation from such cases? As you reflect on this story, consider the societal and personal implications. Think about how media shapes our perception of crime and criminals. Reflect on the legal and ethical questions surrounding punishment and the death penalty. And most importantly, Consider what this case reveals about the nature of human relationships and the societal constructs that govern them. The Snyder murder case, like many true crime stories, offers more than just a narrative of wrongdoing. It provides a mirror to our values, fears and desires. It challenges us to look deeper into the causes of crime, the dynamics of relationships and the framework of our justice system. We invite you to carry these reflections with you, 
to discuss them with others, and to continue exploring the profound stories that true crime offers. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the heart of one of history's most gripping murder cases. Until next time, keep questioning, keep seeking, and always strive to understand the deeper truths of the world around us.